Good morning, everybody. This is Martin John, and I'm here to do Dow of the Day. Dow of the Day is a program that I've been doing on this app, uh, whether it was uh, Wisdom or its current incarnation, Noom Vibe, um, for a number of years. And what we do is we talk about the Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching is an ancient text. It was written about 600 BCE. This is around the same time a lot of... Um, Scholars believe the Old Testament was written. And so being an ancient text that's been in our background, we've been reading it for millennia, uh, about 3,000 years, a little less. And um, we want to remember that even though the text was written uh, in 600 BCE, it was around and we were talking about it because the I Ching uh, was written after uh, the Tao Te Ching, but its its musings were around much before. So the musings of what is going on in the Tao Te Ching were around, and it was just written down because it was apparently a request. It was a request by a king when Lao Tzu was trying to get out of town. He was like, I can't take this anymore. You know, I can't take society anymore the way it's going. And I can't, I can't just, I just can't live like this. You know, when, when you hear Dr. Rao tell me, hey, you might want to um, uh, always stay in Tao. Don't, don't leave Tao to, you know, be egoic. Don't leave Tao. And that was what Lao Tzu presumably was doing. It's just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And he went out and um, just lived, you know, lived alone. That's the story, whether or not that actually happened or not is always, you know, it's always up for debate. But on this show, what I do is I invite you up to uh, pick a number between 1 and 81. Um, and the reason that I add this, I like to chat with you about what's going on with you, uh, is because I don't want you to just come up and go, number 42. <laughs> um, I want to I wanna get a baseline for who I'm talking to a little bit. And just be like, hey, what's going on? And then you can tell me, oh, I woke up early this today and I have to go to work, but that's about it. And then I'll ask you to um, to pick a number. I might ask you, you know, like, well, what do you do? And da, da, da. Let's get to know each other a little bit. You know, we're human. I like to connect. And that's one of the big reasons I do this. I enjoy to connect with you. I enjoy connecting people to the Tao because uh, the Tao has helped me quite a bit. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I got 23 years clean and sober. And a big aspect of that is the Tao Te Ching. And when I talk about living a reasonable life, which is what the Tao helps us do, um, it's living a life in which we're not asking other things, people, space, weather, whatever it is, to be anything other than it is. We respect it for what it is, and then it and the universe respects us and what we are. So that is what the Tao Te Ching is, and Tao of the Day is just you come up, you pick a number. It's very much like an oracle. It's like an oracle deck where it's like you're just going to pick a number and see what comes up. And if we get to know each other a little bit and we get to connect that to what it is you're doing in your life right now, well, then um, all the better. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick a number to give you guys an idea of what these look like. If you've never heard of the Tao before, don't be afraid. Each one of these chapters, each one of these 81 chapters, so I'm going to ask you to pick a number between 1 and 81. Um, each one of these 81 chapters is uh, filled with wisdom and filled with ideas about how to live a more reasonable life. So it is, um, so that's what it is. So I'm going to read number six today. It's very short. But just because it's short doesn't mean that I won't be able to talk about it for a long period of time. Um, if you listen to me at all, you know I can talk about anything for a long period of time. <laughs> um, but this is entitled The Great Feminine. So you may uh, have grown up with a masculine God. Um, and all the more power to you. Uh, whatever. It's all good. Um, in the Tao. We talk about the difference between masculine and feminine, right? And when we talk about the difference between masculine and feminine, what we're talking about is the difference between structure and substance. Um, 
And substance, pure substance, um, can't really be experienced um, in, well, I mean, I, I'm sure it can, but pure substance, if your soul was pure love, that's substance, you would, like, in order to experience that pure love, you have to get out of your body because your body is structure, right? And you have to get out of your mind. You have to get out of everything. And you have to open up to the abstract of the entirety of all things because this is pure love, right? Like pure. Like this is why in all religious texts and stuff, it's like you can't cast your eyes on God because it's, it's substance without structure. There is no structure. There's no, you know, like God isn't an old man in the wood, in the, in the clouds, you know, because that's, that's being held in. That's being limited to something. There's no body on God, right? There's no body. There's no structure that can hold all of that, all of that substance. And, um, when we talk about substance and structure, Substance being feminine, structure being masculine. So this this one is entitled The Great Feminine. And we're going to talk a little bit about like the idea that the, the that which came before the masculine was the feminine. You know, the masculine only has purpose when substance exists. And I'm not talking about men. You know, I'm talking about the masculine, the structure. So, so you have what you, you wouldn't need a structure to hold nothing. You need a structure to hold substance, something, and that's the substance, right? So the substance of the universe is what is being held by the edge of the universe. The substance of who you are, the soul of who you are is being held within the body. Now you can have access to the pure substance. But it's being held within your body, and so it can be, it can move around, and it can be, it, it, it can, it's, it's a part of the whole, right? Like, everything is the whole and is connected to everything, but you are a part of that, and a part of that is within the structure of your body. And so we talk about it in this sense of substance and structure. So number six the great feminine. Everything is born from the feminine, even heaven and earth. The feminine that births is a mother. She nourishes and supports without possessing. Despite your awareness of it, you're using it right now. So that's it. Like that's the whole verse. I'm going to read it again because it is so short. Everything is born from the feminine, even heaven and earth. The feminine that births is a mother. She nourishes and supports without possessing. Despite your awareness of it, you're using it right now. Now, what have we birthed in our life? You know, when we start asking about like what we have birthed, we have birthed emotions, we have birthed thoughts, we have birthed ideas, we have birthed conversations. Speaking of, Julie, how are you? I'm all right. How are you, Martin Job? I'm good. Why is that, Martin Job? Why are you feeling so good today? I was yeah. spitting in your general direction yesterday, yes, Martin yes, John. Yes, I was yes. going, oh, he's going to be so full of himself. Oh, come now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my, my playing with you. Yes. I'm playing with you. But, yeah, good game. Good, good game. game. Enjoyed it, yeah. yeah. And then it rained today, Martin John, and I looked out and I thought, I wonder if it's raining here because of people's kind of feelings towards the football. You know, I had an interesting, I had an interesting experience over the weekend. I was at a friend's house, staying in Cleveland. It was like a five-hour drive from my house, 
And so I stayed there for, you know, I, I stayed overnight two nights, and I was there all day Saturday. And on Saturday, I went to, uh, my, my, she lives with, like, seven others in her family, right? Mm. And so I, I, it was her turn to make dinner. And so I was like, oh, I, I, I love cooking. And so we, we cooked this nice meal for everybody and stuff. But the night before, on Friday, when I arrived, her dad got upset because somebody used all the propane in the propane tanks for the grill. Oops. And um, and he was angry. Now he, he he's, he's a fine man, but he also has, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to say substance use problems. He just uses some substances. You know, he drinks, yeah. he smokes, he does some things. Um. And, and so sometimes when, you know, you get caught up in that escaping, like, you, there's reactionary. Yeah. You know, uh, latent experiences. So he got upset about this. And everybody, you know, like, I mean, not me, but, like, everybody in the family was very much like, hey, let's curtail all this. Stuff. Let's, let's, let's calm it down. You know, we have a guest kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the next day... He starts the grill up, and he had the grill. You know, he did. He, everything ended up okay for him. You know, yeah. but the next day he started the grill, and the grill caught fire. Oh crikey! Right? I'm not and, look with this grill, is he? <laughs> <laughs> and and it was interesting for me to be like, oh, remember your dad got upset, da, da, da. But it was all about, and and you know, like it was it was very much like there there was in the household with so many people and things there could be a lot of hectic energy and and and, and I related it to an energetic sort of experience you know? yeah and that, and that's uh you know it it you can create so much so quick yeah absolutely yeah you can <coughs> the rain can you hear me okay Mark? yeah i got you good, yeah. good. So, so yeah, so I was uh, reading number six, and I'd be happy to go back to that if you have a number you'd like to pick. No, no, we're going to stick with number six. I like it. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and read it again. Uh, yeah. So the great feminine. Everything is born from the feminine, even heaven and earth. The feminine that births is a mother. She nourishes and supports without possessing. Despite your awareness of it, you're using it right now. Mm. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Um, I um, everything is being birthed all of the time. Even That's the experience right. that you're having, you're, the, you're, you're experiencing something, and then that, it, with that experience, you are inputting into it. Yeah. So you are now birthing that particular perception, that particular experience for yourself. Yeah. So you're using that. You're you're using that birthing mechanism all of the time in every moment that you come across, and it's up to you. You get to you get to be creative. Yeah. You get to create which, whatever it is. You you do actually get to say this is going to be good. This is going to be bad. This is going to be an observance. This is going to be a creation that I'm going to get really involved in. But you get to have a look at that every time. And yet you're in it all of the time as well. All the time. <laughs> Everything that you create. You know, it, it, this is very short and it's very broad. You know, I want to remind everybody, this is number six. We're in the beginning of the Tao. This is kind of setting a, a tone. This is setting. Mm. This is, we're still in the space of like trying to establish what Tao is. It's the creation. Yeah. So everything is born from the feminine, even heaven and earth. Now... When we say that, everything is born, even heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Like, everything. Everything that you think, every word that I speak, every thought that I have, every pimple I pop, every, <laughs> every moment of my life is every being breath birthed. You take, every yeah. breath I take, every move I make. Yeah. Everything I do, everything is born from the feminine. It's encapsulated in the masculine. It's encapsulated in structure of some sort. However, everything is born from 
the feminine. So we are all born from the feminine. And it's like, like your mother. Like you're birthed from your mother, but every thought is birthed from its mother, you. Whether you're, whether you're masculine or feminine in your body, mm. this is a feminine creation. Everything that is created is anything that has any substance, anything that has space has space is created from the feminine anything that has structure is even created from the feminine the idea yeah. the idea that we need structure to hold something the idea that a masculine is even needed started because of the feminine mhm the feminine that births is a mother she nourishes and supports without possessing so once you put some, once something comes and in, goes into the world, yeah, n- let it go. Don't, let, don't expect. Let it go. And yeah. it goes like when you, you know, when you, and and again, when you have a thought and you put it in the world, you tell somebody about it, or you, or you just even even bring it to the fore of your consciousness. You're putting it in the world. It is being birthed, and where is it being birthed from? The feminine within you, the substance within you the soul that you are it isn't even putting together like information from three different books or or documentaries that, and you say oh this you're birthing an idea and that birth of that idea is coming from your substance yeah birthing of a concept no yeah. matter where you've created or no matter what combination you've used to birth that concept that concept is brand new brand new new is a great word a new experience new new for me is like birthing yeah and so it's it yours is, and and yeah. it came from your it came from your substance it didn't come from your structure it didn't only come from the knowledge that you have it came mm-hmm. from the knowledge that you have and um, that you have picked up, and the experiences, and the individual substance that you carry. Yeah. That is, that is, you know, it's also, so much of that substance is shared, but, like, you have access to a very specific type, yeah. in a very specific way, from a very specific vantage point. Yeah, it's, uh, it's... This perception is so unique to oneself. Yeah. And that perception, if you thought about it, is creation. Right. That is creating how you um, exist, how you go through the world, how you view the world, how you interact with the world. That perception is creation. And every second, that's new. Every and when you, have that, when you have that perception, you don't hold on to it. You have to let it go. Yeah. You have to because holding on to it is pointless. Right. What's it going to do for you? It has to get it's out just, there. It has right. To... If, you, if you have a singular um, subjective experience of the world, you have the singular subjective experience of the world, the only way that you can... The only way that... that like. If you did not share that in any way, if you did not share any of your ideas, if you did not share, if you did not, like when you talk to somebody, when you, even you and I right now, we are, we are two individuals with certain perceptions of certain lives, like you're female in England, I'm male outside of Chicago, like there's all of these things that, that are different about us and I cannot hide that and yet every word that I speak is coming from that experience. Mm-hmm. Same. Not, not not the same as you, obviously, because Obvious. I'm me. <laughs> right. I'm having a subjective experience, and while I'm having a subjective experience, I'm sharing that, and you can't understand it, and I can't do anything but let it go out into the world. I can't yeah. hide it, because it's true. My body holds a subjective experience. Even yeah. if I run away from society and live in the woods somewhere, that experience is still being shared. Correct. Yeah. And that's why, despite your awareness of it, you're using it right now. You're contributing 
to this whole through your subjective experience. You are using the feminine and birthing things moment to moment by moment. And everything that's coming... Now, how much are you possessing those things? You don't possess the things that you don't even notice you're putting in the world. And they're going out in the world and they're doing what they do. Yeah, but sometimes then, you don't know. Sometimes right. you don't realize. You, you, you have no idea of what you're putting out in the world. You just don't know what you're birthing. That's right. <laughs> and, and I can speak to you and everybody that's listening, and I can be birthing all of these great ideas and all of these great words that are then, you know, having grandchildren, if you will, right? Like they're having, like someone else has an idea, and then they have an idea, and they have an idea. And it goes off on its own, and it builds what it does. And this is the great feminine. The great feminine is, you know, one thing leads to another, gets births another, births another. And I don't put it into a package. Eventually, somebody may want to encapsulate it mm. in structure in words like and write them down and in and in like i mean even with my dao it's encapsulated in words right mm. like and so it's written down and it's you know this is what it it became and but i was aware of that and i did it and i you know like there's all of that work that went into it, that physical work but there's so much that we don't even think about as work think about us as doing it just comes from yeah, it's um, like, so if you were going to say about your Tao very quickly before I kind of run out of time, here's a good example of birth and something that you don't know. So <clears throat> you, you wrote this um, version of Martin John. <clears throat> and um, very luckily we managed to get some over here in the UK. So Brad's got a version and I've got one and we, we keep it in the van because we're in our van a lot. So we get to have a look at it every day. And sometimes when I'm out and about, like on a beach... I'll hand that book to a complete stranger and I'll explain them to them. I'll say, just pick pick any 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 page from there, any page at all, and see how it'll help you with your day. That's birthing. You've yeah. birthed. I've birthed. Now this person is going to read this and they're going to birth mm -hmm. in their way. But yeah. Martin John, when you wrote that, you, in that version of that Tao, you wouldn't have known that, that gentleman on that beach that I met that read right. a particular verse and then he actually read out some of that verse to me because it it hit his points so <laughs> well he, he understood it so well that was lovely but I didn't say anything to him even though he repeated that little bit of a sentence to me because that was his right. so I can birth I can birth the meat I can birth the have a look at the book once I've done that I've got to let go when you wrote that you let go that's the thing about we don't own what we birth. We do not. And, you know, I look at my children and my grandchildren, I think very much the same thing as well. They are just doing what they are doing. You know, it's, it, you know it, it just came to me, this idea that, you know, when we birth, we're constantly birthing. Yeah. And when we birth something and encapsulate it in the masculine, we feel, I think, that we own it because now it has structure. Mm -hmm. But we don't feel like we can own... Like, that's the thing. The feminine can't be owned because it doesn't have any structure. It's just... It's just this free-flowing um, experience. It's just this free-flowing energy. Mm. And it can't be owned. It can't be... It can't be encapsulated until we build a structure. A structure around it, like, yes. Right, like a book or this is what I did for you, don't you love me, or whatever, you know, all of the arguments that we make around um, all of that stuff. And you just dropped out. If you wanted to chat again, please come up. But I understand if uh, you don't have the time or um, are off doing your thing. Um, so everything that is born, everything is born from the feminine. And we have to recognize that everything is born from this thing that is not structured. Like, it's, like, I can give someone my Tao, and they can have a thought. That thought is birthed. It's not birthed from my Tao Te Ching. It is birthed from their spirit. That's 
the feminine. That is the pure feminine. It is encapsulated in their mind and their body and all of that. Mm. But they and where everything comes from is coming from this pure feminine. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's lovely to be able to um, kind of observe it as well because I was observing the guy reading the, the book, the structure of that book, the, 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 the words in there, that's all structure and everything, and then he's reading it and there's this interaction between what he's reading, you know, the, the structure of him and what he's reading, and then there's that space. And to be yeah. able to see that, that's lovely. And then they look up at, you know, this person looked up at me and it just all fell into place so wonderfully. That's, that's the thing about birthing. Birthing is a marvellous thing. It's such a beautiful thing. And then letting it go is also kind of the other end of that. You know, you'll often find people who say they are present at the birth of, of a child. They'll say it's a joyous moment, but at the same time, they will understand that it is already dying. Yeah. It's, it's just so profoundly deep a thing. To be able to see, 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 see this birthing of, of, of a, an interaction, um, a reflection, a feeling, an energy, it's just so, so lovely to be able to see it and let it be. Let it go. Don't own it. Just just bathe in it for a moment and know that that moment's going to pass. That's okay. That's fine. Because now, now you're making space, which is what the feminine is, for new experience, for new birthing. Right. Yeah, it's lovely. It's really, really good. You know, I, I look at this and I see, and I, and I have to remind myself of the layers of structures. There are, right? mm. There's a structure around the universe, the wall of the universe that is ever expanding. The, um, and then there's a structure on the earth, right? Like the, 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 the solidity of the earth, the, the land of the earth, the rock of the earth. And then there's a structure around you. And then there is a structure around your identity. And then there's, you know, all of these structures. Mm. Within each one yields a new substance, yields a new a new soul, yields a new purpose, yields a new... And here at the end where it says, despite your awareness of it, you're using it right now. Because yeah. you, as a masculine exterior, you know, no matter your gender, you know, yeah. like the structure of your body is, uh, is that masculine, and it's holding your soul, which mm. is the substance. I mean, well, lack of a better term, I'm going to use the word soul. Um... Maybe you're holding Tao, you know, that could be what you reference as your soul. But either way, despite your awareness, you were birthed, but you weren't just birthed from your mother. That's just the, that's just the structure of how your body came to be. The soul that you are has always been the, the spirit, the consciousness that you the carry. essence of you the essence of you the the substance that you are is yeah. has been birthed from a mother right and that's not just your mother that has been birthed from the the the, the universe from that which created all of these things yeah, which is Although, pretty awesome, don't you think, Martin John? Because yeah. you can't even find a word for it. But we all know, and we're listening to what you're saying, what you mean. We know that we are part of the whole, the everything. We're part of the Tao, okay? Yeah. And then we are kind of experiencing ourselves. So it is the whole... In, with, within every, every structure that is experiencing itself mm -hmm. all of the time and it's, uh, it's absolutely amazing it absolutely makes me so um, so kind of blissful that I get to, to be part of that just one small part of the, the, the whole experience in itself I get to do that that's really quite something <laughs> yeah. 
you know, like, I was going on. <laughs> it's this, it's this, you know, like Russian doll thing where you keep opening it up and you keep discovering a new, a new, yeah. a new core, you know. And then there is, you know, Dao, which Dao is the the thing that everything is within. Yeah, because you know? and it, without. We are interconnected with absolutely everything. Absolutely right. everything. Yeah. You know, and those Russian dolls, they, they, they do reference this. It is like this inside of this, inside of this, inside of this. And, you know, when we look around the world, Tao is Chinese, Brahman is Indian, and, you know, the Russian dolls are Russian, right? Like, and, and everywhere we go, and every in every culture we find, in every historic culture, we find this reference of inside substance structure, substance structure, substance yeah. structure. Within the space exists another one. You yeah. know? And even though, yes, okay, these are dolls, it's cute, da da, but no, this is this is what they're this is what they're experiencing in life. Like within me exists the next iteration of what I'm putting in the world and and there is space within me for that, which I am going to birth. Yeah, quite quite amazing, really, isn't it? When you think it, it, it kind of makes you feel more kind of productive in a way. That you still don't know it all. You still don't know what the potential is. It's just Despite your know. awareness of it, yes. you're using it right now. Yeah, that's it. It's awesome. You know. Thank you, Martin. Absolutely. I'm going to continue chatting about this, but you uh, you enjoy your morning or Take afternoon care, and we'll be in touch. Love you. Speak soon. Bye. Yeah. So I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday about, you know, how we think we're so smart here in our world today. And I, and I told you, you know, I like asking people like where the, where the moon is, where the moon's going to be tonight. Because... I really can put, like some of you may, may very well know where the moon's going to be tonight. Um, like you can like identify where in the sky it's going to be because there's this, um, there's the idea that like, you know, ancients knew that like, and the moon is still in our sky. Why don't we? Mary, how are you? I'm okay. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Oh, I just... I just want to take a moment. Like, I don't know why, but I'm just like, I just want to connect with you really briefly. It's always like, you. it was so nice to have you come up. As soon as you said hello, I just felt like this just rush of love. Thank you. Thank, and I needed that. And that's why I came to see you. And I'm giving you all the love right back. I was oh. just like, I need to go and talk to Martin today. And no. Yes. Tell I me just what's going on. You. It's just kind of been like a little bit of a rough few days i um my phone has been hacked twice in like mm. three days um i've had found out about a, um some major security breaches um with my identity stuff and it's been crazy like things that are so surreal you know what i mean yeah and um so last night my um fiance said Hun, he goes, we're just going to go. He goes, I'm going to get you a new phone tomorrow. So when he gets out of work today, we're going up to get me a new phone. But I'm going to, I mean, that doesn't solve everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, but, and really, I mean, there's, there's energetic things that are happening that are causing this that we're going to have to learn from and we're going to have to figure that out. And, and uh, as uh, you do that, you know, you will you will grow beyond this, right? You know, identity yeah. is such a big thing. and That's uh, the thing. That, you know, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, 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 no. This is, this is your world. Come on, tell me. But it's just so, I've been, you know, I was like a couple of days ago, I'm like, no, I can, I can, you know, get past this. It's fine because other people are, you know, have things so much worse. And you know what? It's true. It really is. But then that doesn't take away from what we have going on at the same time, right? You know? That's right, right. Like you like this is an a subjective experience, right? Like you yeah. can't have someone else's experience. You're having your experience. You right. know, 
I, I tell people all the time this idea of like trauma, right? Like trauma is trauma is trauma. Like mm -hmm. if you experience trauma because someone took your parking spot, mm -hmm. yes, you, um, you had it easy in your life, right? <laughs> like, yeah, but, right. But life is a subjective experience. I cannot um, understand the depths of being abused as a child right. if the experience that I had when someone took my parking space was trauma. It's all the same. It's just right, about right. where you're approaching it. Yeah, no I, ex no, I get it. That makes so much sense. Oh, and you know what? Here's the other part of it. To make it more frustrating, I reset my, um, I did a total reset on my iPhone the first time, right, a few days ago. And so then when it restarted and my iCloud kept saying, sinking, 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 and it kept saying that for like a day and a half. Oh. And I'm like, where are all my photos? Yeah. Where are all my contacts? Mm. It never gave them back to me. See, this is like a well, so I'm going to guess that like this things like that. Yeah, I mean who I am. Who I yeah, am. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, these are, this is this is who I am. These are all the pictures I took as I was before, and these are all the people that I know. This is who I am. This is my identity. Yeah, and I had to make a new Facebook, even though like I saw my my one that I had right before this happened, like four days ago, right? So I I, I sent a message to Facebook because I'm like, oh my god, there I am with all my contacts. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the first thing I thought of, though, oh my gosh, was was Noom Vibe. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I hope that it doesn't take it away. I hope that you know what I'm saying. I was like, but then I saw that I had to restart here too, and I just that that was like. I, I just, I was crushed. I was like, that's my family. Honest and truly, that's how I felt. Oh, see, this is all like, this is a, and, and, you know, no, that's, that's all very beautiful. And I'm very glad that, that you, um, that you feel that way. However, it's like, it is attached to identity. This is who I am. Yeah. This is, who, this is my family. These are the people that, that I need in my life, right? This is the great yes. thing. This is like, you know, we, it's so hard. It's so hard to be able to just be like, okay, my, my identity is forfeit at any moment. Yes. You know? I don't think anybody realizes how hard, like, especially today. Yeah. We and... have traded, we have traded like the, 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 the solidity and the foundation of all of that. And it's actually like, like there is like, we do have to realize that there is no solidity or foundation in that, no. but, but it felt it felt like there was for so long. We were under the influence of that, you know. Oh my gosh, Martin! Even like, and I checked this out because um, even like those games that you can download um, to play. Okay, they if anybody has ever read their privacy policy, it's, it's not private. No, they state that they have the right to sell your information. Yeah. And that's the third, third party partners. And that could be just somebody in Nigeria looking to take all your bank information. And they exactly. don't care. Like they, they, and, and they protect themselves by, and then you're like, when you, when you, when you have that checkbox in front of you, you're like, well, other people are doing it too, because this is so popular. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. I'm not going to read it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's for every single one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, because that's how they're making their money. Yes. Yep. And, um, it's disgusting. Yeah. I mean, and, um, there's, I, I mean, oh, I just, this I is can't the devil's bargain. It. You know what I it mean? It is. We're, and we're it's like, yeah. Oh, it's terrible. I mean, I'm going to be calling the FTC, um, in a little while and because there's actually a couple of the class action lawsuits that, um, that you're going to align with. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it already said that I um, should, that I belong in them, that my name came up for them. Oh, good. So, I mean, but you know what, it's not even about the class action lawsuits. Yeah. Cause you you're going to get I mean? $25 for that, whatever. Yeah, you exactly. Know, like, it's not like it, but, and, and that's, and that's a whole nother business. Right. Yeah. So that's not like the people who are going to get off best with that are the lawyers that set up the class action lawsuit. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And so it's like For real. you're, you're going to attach to that and then you're going to because it's it's all it's all about money. We have we have we have reduced mm -hmm. life into to money. 
money. And so what we have is we have uh, greedy companies um, not caring about clients, not caring mm-hmm. about you and your privacy and anything about you. They're just like, oh, no, we're going to make we're going to make a game and then we're going to collect all this data and then we're going to sell this data because the game's not going to make money. Right. You know? We can yep. sell things in the game yep. and we have to do that so we can get your information so that we can sell it. Yeah. <laughs> and and, yeah. and we're going to make money on both sides. And then when that fails, we're going like lawyers are out there going, oh, we could we could clean this up and we can make money by cleaning it up. You know, and yeah. it is us choosing to engage in something that starts the process. Once we choose to engage in something, then we become suckers in the system. And then we You're say, right. well, the system didn't work for me. The system was never meant to work for you. No. The system was meant to work for people who are taking your money. Yeah. Isn't and it that, disgusting? It's just and that like just, rotating. That just, yeah. It just, it just continues the cycle one after another. It's like, oh, we're going to make a company that makes chemicals. Oh, we put chemicals in the ocean. We're going to make a company that makes that, that makes stuff to clean up those chemicals. But we're not going to do it well. You know, <laughs> and, then, and then we're going to make a nonprofit to control all of the people like, and to oversee all of the people who are in the industry with with all of this stuff. Oh, great. Let's give money to that nonprofit. And then we find out it's all the same person just screwing us. And it it's, not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not doom and gloom, you know, like there are people doing good work and stuff like that. But, but that is, it's a cycle of greed. And it's disgusting. You know, what my fiance and I were just talking about the other night, because we love baseball, right? But now it's, they've taken the um, American pie baseball, you know, sport of a, you know what I'm saying? That, mm-hmm. that hometown thing out of it, because now you have to purchase Amazon prime or you have to purchase um, what they, they have it on In order to watch stations to watch yeah. at Everything's time. behind a paywall. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, what is the matter with these people? Like just well, let they, people enjoy baseball, you we've know, gotten, we've gotten to a point where we're paying people a lot of money to play a lot of games and do yeah. a, and 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 that's true i didn't look at it like that yeah and we got you know and we have these big stadiums that nobody wants to go to anymore because they're too expensive and so when they stopped oh, going yeah. when they stopped going they said well then how are we going to get their money yeah. because we have reduced everything to money you know like and that's yes. the big that's the big thing it's like we have this is this is the the this is this is why I say we're at the end of logic because we hone everything logically, right? Like there was a time before we, you know, clear cut and and grew farms on huge plots of land in which right. we grew food in and amongst the forest. Right. Yeah. And we didn't cut anything. We just we just oh well we're gonna we're gonna take these seeds and we're gonna spread them around here and this is the area in which we are going to grow. Uh, certain foods and you know we, we were probably still nomadic while we were doing things like that and and then we were like oh you know what makes more sense if we cut everything down and then just grow one thing and then we and then we grow one thing in every different section and eventually that turned into modern farming and then mm-hmm. that that was when food was the most important thing as and well then we as started and then we started <laughs> hoarding food then we yep. started hoarding food and then we were like wait a minute like uh, now we're going to create money, right? And then that's going to take the place. And that's actually where greed started is when we started like growing food and then, you know, like trading food for, for whatever, rather than you and your neighbors all growing different things. And like, oh, you trade and you sit down at one table and everybody eats together and all of these sorts of things. Yeah. Right? It became, it became, no, it's mine. It's mine. Yeah. Yep. You know, and, and the thing is, it's not yours. It never was. No, Even your no life. you're right. It's truly not. Yeah. It's truly not. Right. You're correct. Yep. Mm-hmm. You're right. And people don't realize that. You got to stop and think, you know, who blessed you with it, right? That's right. And um, you might be putting the work in and that's where it becomes unequal. But, um, yeah, you're Well, you're but that's the thing. Everyone's right. putting in different work. You know, I mean, I look at, I look at the homeless 
things. Oh. I grew up in Chicago and I look at the homeless and I, and I am so grateful for them to do that work. We have to recognize that like all of the work that's being done out in the world is being done for us. Like, because yeah. I'm doing my work for everybody else. I'm doing my work of, of, of being for everybody. Mm -hmm. And there are people out there doing the work of, you know, of being, um, uh, uh, you know, like having ADHD. I don't have ADHD because other people have it and mm -hmm. they're going through the work of having it. And I'm grateful for them. Mm -hmm. I get to live in a home because this is my experience, but there are other people who have the experience who, who are being, who were put on this earth to have the experience of not having that. And I have to be grateful to that. And I have to, and I have to love them. And I have to, and I have to be able to, um, be grateful for them to be homeless. I have to be grateful for those, those people that are fleeing because there's no opportunities in other places. I have to be grateful for the experiences that they're having. Be grateful you know, for the experience of the, of the people that are in this world and hate so much that they can't see beyond their own hate. I have to be grateful for that because I don't have to have that experience because they're the ones that are having it. And I have to say, it's so thank you for, for taking that on because I would not want to do that. Well, you know what I try to look at it as, and um, like, because it's like I have my seizure disorder and I've had that for 20 mm -hmm. some years before I was in domestic violence. And right. then after domestic violence, it was PTSD and then, now the ADHD and then finding out the dyscalculia and all of this would have um, knocked somebody out and made them just whatever. But at the end of the day, the way that I look at it as, is that, okay, Lord, you're just giving me one more group of people that I can help along the way. Right. That's right. And you, and you are, you are taking, you are doing so much and this is your experience. So, you can mm -hmm. frame it however you want to. Mm -hmm. And um, by framing it with love, um, rather than, you know, being like, oh, I don't want this. Like, this is this is yours, whether you want it or not. Right. Like, so, yeah. you know, framing it will will help you through that. And, you know, maybe, you know, talking to other individuals, talking to myself, talking, to, you know, will help you, you know, soften towards it. And then be able to really kind of be who you are because, you know, it's so important. And I want you to come back up if you have the time because we didn't even get to pick a number yet. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, like you are here um, to to do that work. You know, that is the work that you're here to do. Whether you want to accept that as your work or not, that doesn't oh, matter. You know, I just see. like it says, just like it says in this number six that we read, despite your awareness of it, you're using it right now. Now you could... You could birth, you know, as it says in this number six that we were talking about, everything is born from the feminine. You could birth the concept that you're a victim or you can mm -hmm. birth the concept that this is your work and this is who you are. And you are you are going to love and and you're not going to possess this because you're going to mm -hmm. let it go. You're going to let it go back, but you're going to work through it. You're going to raise it and you're going to allow it to live well, beyond yeah. be, outside of you. Oh, definitely. Because what I'm realizing, you see, is like sometimes I'll sit here while I'm feeling bad and feeling bad about it and think, well, you know, you got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. But that's when I'm like, no, I'm OK to grieve over it. It yeah. would be different if I wasn't calling the FTC. Right. Or yeah. taking um, positive action toward trying to solve it and made my life more secure and taking those preventative measures. But like you said, it's, it, it is, it's my identity, you know, and it's like, okay, so when is this going to stop to the point where I don't have to worry about it affecting my inner life? Like there it's my, I, it was, um, they got into my patient portal. This was just a couple of mm -hmm. nights ago. I was, um, and I, from what I understand, um, that's, that's golden to somebody to get your medical records and, um, you know, and, uh, and then they were able to, um, they compromised my, the state of New York for, um, 
the TAP and Pell grants for college and my federal as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's gotten severe, but I just have to, um, do what I can. All I can do is, is get a hold of the FTC and, um, I've already frozen my credit reports and just breathe. Right. It's just yeah, that's about right. That's breathing. Right. Like it'll like, there's so much to do when that happens. There's so many things you can do. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I'm sure there are companies that'll tell you happily that they'll take care of it for you. Oh yeah. But that's yeah. just, that's just, and that's just embedding yourself into another possible risk. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's always an answer. Oh, like, yeah. Especially, especially in a world that is so consumer driven that you will always find mm -hmm. an answer, but mm -hmm. you within yourself have the ability to overcome it. Even if your data and all your money was taken, you're still you. Yeah, that's true. Even if I'm... Everything, if it, everything went to pot, you would still be married. And that is enough to, to go with. And yeah, of course you would need a lot of faith in yourself and in God and all of this and in the world of manifestation. We I prefer, love you, Martin. <laughs> oh, I love you too. We prefer to look at the conspicuous. We prefer to look out at the physical. Yeah. Look out at what is physically happening. But it's like, right. if we looked at what is physically happening, we're just fooled into believing it. Let's go ahead right. and pick a number. Um, you know what I was thinking was number 70. It's just, it was like yeah. right there, even before, you know, it's like, bam, it's been there. So these teachings is the title here. So these teachings could refer to not only the teachings that are here in the Tao Te Ching, but the teachings that you're getting in your life, like your data being stolen. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a lesson you're going to mm -hmm. have to learn from. So let's go ahead and read this and see what it says. These teachings are simple and transform lives. And yet mere intellect cannot grasp them. These teachings are older than life and benefit all things, yet people prefer the manifestation. Ooh, we were just mm -hmm. talking about that. Yes, we were. Very few people will ever truly understand what is written herein. But for those few, these pages will guide them to themselves. Meanwhile, they will be labeled as coarse and uncaring. In the manifestation, they are seen as dull and disinterested. Yet in their heart shines a light for all things. Wow. I'm just sitting quietly for a moment, holding you. Mm. What stood out for you? It was about the, how very few people will understand that in the teachings. Yeah. You know, um, and, and that's the, that's big because you in this moment, okay, we can look at it from two different ways, right? From the Tao, but also from your experience in, in life, not just mm -hmm. your data breach. Okay. Like the, you're living your life. Mm -hmm. These teachings that you would receive in life are simple. Yeah. Yet mere intellect cannot grasp them. And what do we do when we have a lesson in life? The first thing we do is try and understand it. Yeah. And this is what happened. This is how it happened. Da, da, da. And we don't, we don't often look at it as a lesson as much as we look at it as these are things that happened. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And once I've kind of like grieved and even in between, you know, I try to look at the positive where it's like, okay, at some point I'll be able to help somebody else with this. And, you know, and it's true because there's always going to be, it's just one more, I think of it as a train and they take all the cars and they hook them together. Right. Right. And so this is just one more box to add to that train yeah. for me of people that I can help, you know, you never know. And, um, the more, experience and feeling and emotion that you have about something then when someone has that same experience you can not just say i understand but then you can explain the emotion and then they know they're not alone yeah but that was perfect and honestly 
right from the very start of our conversation, I was thinking number 70 and mm -hmm. there was the reason, you know what I mean? I didn't, it was, you know, reason. like, that's the thing. This text has been around, you know, from since before Jesus, mm -hmm. right? this text has been around and, and the text has been, you know, is, is organized in a way yeah. that, that we, we, we know in our soul, right? mm -hmm. we've been, we've been batting this thing around for millennia. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, you know, it's like, it's very similar to opening a Bible and being like, okay, guide me. Right. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's like picking up an Oracle deck. I mean, I don't know how, how esoteric you, you, you know, you want to agree to, but like sometimes, you know, like people can just pick a card and they can understand the meaning of that card for this moment. Because God is working through us and is speaking to us. And, and like it says here, oh, yeah. these teachings are older than life and benefit all things. God is teaching, and I'm speaking in terms of God at the moment, God is teaching us at every moment with every, with every interaction. These yes, teachings are older than life. These teachings, the, the, the fact that like these teaching had to exist before life did, because if life came out without these teachings, if life started without the ability to without without purpose to mm -hmm. teach, then there would be no reason to have life. You're right. Yet people prefer the manifestation. People prefer to get caught up in this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. But what happened is just teaching you about who you are, about what you're focused on. About and if you what, never, never you know, learn, right? And if you don't pay attention, if you don't stop and say, this is, this is my lesson, not this is what happened to me. I'm the victim of this life. No, you are the recipient of the gift of life. And mm -hmm. through this gift, you will learn through this gift. You will experience through this lift gift. You will, you will live. And you can be, I am the victim of the manifestation. People prefer the manifestation while we spend you know, two thirds of our day, right? Eight, 16 hours awake, eight hours of sleep. We, we spend two thirds of our day believing in the manifestation and we spend a third of our day going into the world of the spirit of the ideas of uh, whatever it is that happens when we go to sleep. But it's like, that's like, we, we need to balance this out. And that doesn't mean we need to sleep, but that's where mindfulness, that's where slowing down, that's where prayer, that's where meditation, that's where all of that comes from. Yes. And when we can spend, when we can spend quality time being still and not believing the manifestation, but looking at that which happens in our life as the lesson. This mm -hmm. is your lesson. This is your lesson about your identity. It is yeah. not one. It is not yours to own. Other people are selling it for Christ's sake. Yeah. Well, you know, something too is that my mom used to tell me all the time is that, you know, we may not understand everything that happens, but there's a purpose. And, and it's very true. Do I understand why this happens? I mean, of course, there's an obvious surface meaning, right? right, right, right. And, um, and, but perhaps, you know, I need to sit here and really mull over it and say, okay, is there something that I wasn't appreciating about myself? Right. Is there something I wasn't appreciating about my life or what I have as a person right. or, you know what I mean? And then just take it from there and rest assured, mm -hmm. listen, it's all going to be okay. Right. And, and, and uh, you're not doing this alone. That's, and that's the awesome thing. You and know? it's not only that you're doing it with other people because mm -hmm. it, it, you're kind of, not really, because you're having a subjective experience, but you're doing it right. with Tao. You're doing it with God. You're doing it with that which you are. Now, we yeah. look at ourselves and we go, I am this physical being. And it's like, well, yeah, okay, that's, that's mm -hmm. a part of who you are. But, but there is, you know, I was talking earlier about the difference of substance and structure. The substance of who you are, that is God, right? That is, that mm -hmm. is Tao. That is all that is connected. Mm -hmm. And that is that oneness. And then you have the structure, which is your body. And yes, that goes yeah. around. And if we trust the body, then we trust the manifestation. But that mm -hmm. which we are is much more than manifestation. That which we are is much more than we could ever understand with our oh, yeah. minds, right? The spirit, the soul. Yeah. 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 
And then very few people will ever truly understand what is written herein. But what is written herein is talking about Tao, the Tao, Tao, the Tao Te Ching, of course. Mm -hmm. But what is written herein is also the, the book of our life. Mm -hmm. Right. Very, tr very few people are ever going to understand what you're actually doing here. And we, that's why we sit here and we ask the question, what is life? What is what is what is the purpose of life and stuff? Very few people will ever truly understand that it's about living. It's about living this lesson, living this moment, living this thing. It's not about mm -hmm. collecting food, or money or influence mm -hmm. or other things like that. It's about living. It's literally about the boring everyday stuff that we yes. do yeah. to live. Yeah. Not about excitement every minute, you know? I mean... That's just distraction. Yeah, for yeah. real. I mean, it's just about, like you said, living a lesson, learning, you know, taking every bit of everything that we learn from things that we do, right? And, yeah. and building us progressively into the best person that we can be. Yeah. And that's it. Day by day, moment by moment. Like as we, as we, as we, as a society focus more and more on identity and the cult of personality of individuals and all of that stuff, well, then identities get attacked because we're mm -hmm. focused so much on identity. Of course, of course we did. Of course that happened. Mm -hmm. Now, how can I step out of my identity and let God sort of deal with it rather than me define it? Let God, let God or let Tao. Mm -hmm. like, it's let, like releasing let them some live of our through control. me rather yeah. than me trying to, trying to live my life through them. Like let them live through me. Exactly. It's always just about, like, for me, it's hard to let go of control because I had yeah. been controlled. Do you That's know right. what I mean? That's right. So it's always like thinking I have to fix everything. I have to control yeah. everything. So I think that has a lot to do with what this lesson is about because now something happened that was out of my control. You know, I can't fix it by myself. It's gotten too big, you know. Right. The last yeah. line of here. Now, you, if you, you're gonna, you're running out of time. So, if you okay. don't, if you can't come back up, no big deal. I'm gonna continue talking about the, um, the rest of this. But if you wanted okay. to, if you wanted to connect a little bit more, I'd, I'd be happy to have you up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the last part of this states: Meanwhile, they will be labeled as coarse and uncaring. In the manifestation, they are seen as dull and disinterested. Yet in their hearts. Sign, shines a light for all things. Um, what are your thoughts there? Um, well, I think that <laughs> I seem probably, or I probably seem very. Okay, you said uh, you just dropped out, so you seem probably very. Let's let's probably very, and I don't know what you're going to say. I want to hear. Okay. I think on the outside, you know, for the most part, like I, I really enjoyed being home a whole lot more than I ever used to. You know what I mean? Yeah. I used to go here and there and run around and, but I've always had like this really fun personality that, um, well, not when I was in high school and stuff and in those years, but we um, grow and change. It's okay. <laughs> Well, in high school, I was always, you know, teased and just, I wasn't part of that group of people, you know what I mean? And, right. um, but just, it takes me back and it makes me realize how, what I need to, um, work on in my life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, well, but, I want to point out the fact that what you just expressed was part of identity, right? You oh, weren't yeah. one oh, of those yes. people, right? So I just want to, I just want to like... When we talk about this idea, these teachings are older than life yet benefit all things. The teaching, you're living a lesson like your, your, your high school is not different than this moment. Your high school solidified things that well, this moment is helping you learn about. Well, that's the thing, too. And I, I think maybe that's perhaps that's part of the reason that this is affecting me like it is, because then with when you're in domestic violence, when I started advocating and helping women when I came home. The thing is, is that they take your identity from you and make you who they want you to be. 
And so I used to always tell women that you only have one, like one set of fingerprints, that's it. And everyone has their own, like no one has the same set of fingerprints. And so I would tell them, you find out who you are again, one fingerprint at a time. Yeah. And, and it was, I, you know, and I obviously believe that for myself as well, but you know, it, there's times I I've sat there and I'm like, I don't even know who the hell I am. Good. You know, I mean, it's, Good. and that takes a lot to admit, you know, yeah. when you sit here and I'm like, I don't know who I am. And that's scary, but it's like all through life. And that's, but that's, that's truth. Yeah. That's the thing. That's truth. You don't know who you are. Even people that run around and say, I know who I am. And it's like, well, that's no. because you haven't asked. Probably. Right. The exactly. more you ask, the more you realize this, this, this thing that, and that, you know, in the Tao, it starts with, you know, words are particular. They cannot express Tao. You, you, if you can express yourself with words, all you're doing is limiting yourself to some concept that you have. Well, that's, that's the thing. And, and I've just realized in the last few months that I haven't healed like I thought I had from yeah. things in my past. I buried it, right? And, um, yeah. and, I, and that was good enough for then. Yeah, exactly. But now it's not good enough for me. Right. And, and so I'm working not, on not, me. It wasn't wrong. You, no. you, you did you did exactly what you needed to do to get to where you're at. And you're in a place now where you're open to growing and loving oh, and yeah. accepting accepting God or doubt, whatever. Mm-hmm. Accepting that energetic that, that you were birthed from in a way mm-hmm. that in a way that you could have never done before with all of the judgment and all of the identity and all of that. And like Oh yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Aw, thank you. You're beautiful too. I just love you. And that's why I'm like, I've got to see Martin today. (laughs) And it's like weird because we're just talking over, you know, a podcast. But to me, that's like seeing you. Maybe one day we can meet and I can just give you the biggest hug ever because I love to hug people. And I I love, I love receiving and giving hugs as well. Um, So I wanted, I wanted to kind of address these last couple lines before you you run away. And I, and I feel like we're wrapping up. So I don't want to, I don't, I mean, if you run away, you run away and that's fine. And I, no, I'm not going to run away. We're good. (laughs) So meanwhile, they will be labeled as coarse and uncaring. So the question is, well, why, why would these people, mm-hmm. very few people will ever understand what is truly written herein, but those for those few, few, but for those few, these pages will guide them to themselves. So as you're moving to yourself, you are going to be labeled as coarse and uncaring. Mm-hmm. And I look at that as being like, oh, they're selfish, you know, like they're so like, like Martin, like. It's it's funny when I talk to people because I don't I don't get wrapped up in people's stories. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, but this is my story. This is this is so important to me. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really care about your story. I care about you. And so mm-hmm. I want to get beyond your story, your story of like your identity crisis and stuff. Like, really, mm-hmm. Mary, that's your shit. You got to deal with it. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit here and try and try and justify that or try and right. try and be like, Oh, poor kid. You got your identity. So yeah, you and a million others. Like, why are you so important? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, right. so, so I may be labeled as coarse and caring, but the thing is, is I care about you and you learning the lesson about your identity. Mm-hmm. Because if you do that, guess what's not going to happen to you. You're not going not to have your look. identity story right. stolen. Or you are not going to care if it does get stolen. You're going to be in a different place because you will right. be calm within yourself about the identity that you have invested in. Right, right. right? And so, so even though I may, even though I'm like, yeah, you and everybody else, like, so, right. like, why do you think you're so special? Like, why, why, do, why do you deserve like 10 minutes of my time to do that? Because, because I love you and, and I yeah. want you to grow into someone who is, who is, you know, foundationally secure in themselves. Mm-hmm. And in doing that, I, I can't, I can't just go flippantly following your lead because you're going to be upset that, you know, it's possible that somebody that I talk to is going to be upset that they got their 
identity stolen and then that they couldn't get their favorite fruit at the grocery store and then they couldn't you know it's just like <laughs> everything is bad for you right you're the victim right. of the world and i'm so you know like and so mm -hmm. if i were to trust or prefer the manifestation as it reads here right if i were to if i were to prefer to engage the manifestation rather than the lessons written in my life and in the Tao, mm -hmm. then i would just be I would, I would, I'd be crazy. I'd just be always going to, oh, well, this happened and then this happened and then this happened. I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. we all know people like that. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah. In the manifestation. So mm -hmm. anybody that's attached to the manifestation, I am seen as dull and disinteresting. And it's mm -hmm. true. I have found people who are like, oh, Martin, he's such a bore. It's like, I am. Mm -hmm. I, I admit it. I'm a bore. I don't want to go out and do things that will just excite my nervous system. Yeah. Yeah. I want to. I want to be, I want to be present with who you are. Right. If you don't want to be present with who you are, that's going to make you uncomfortable mm -hmm. because I do. There and was a couple of questions that came through last night. Yeah. Um, Cause I love going through and answering those questions, right? The, um, the 60 second questions or whatever. Oh, yeah. And one of them was, um, I, it was like, what do I really enjoy or something like that? And it was, I love deep conversations. Mm. Those are my favorite because I need to have my mind stimulated. Right. And these, you and I, we have those kinds of conversations and they're just amazing. You know what I mean? And yeah. it'll fill me up for a little while today. <laughs> 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 you know, and I like the, the fun stuff too, you know, my football and whatever, but man, these deep conversations are, are what I need. And they, they help me continue to think through the day. Yeah. And these deep conversations get you to engage your life. Yes. And, and, and even though like we still like you're still like you said like the football and the other things right you're still engaging in the manifestation but when you reference when when in like as it's referenced in this number 70 yet people prefer the manifestation like if you were to turn your back on like oh wait these are lessons oh wait i can do this and then spend a little more time every day or a little a little deeper getting a little deeper, getting a little more kind of focused you know, then you will get to a place where, you know, all of those people that are, you know, like eventually you might not get excited about winning a football game and everyone's right. going to look at you and be like, wow, why, why aren't you, why aren't you so excited? And it's just like, well, you know, I found that there's more here. Right. That's exactly it for me. Like when people, um, feel like I've become a little more coarse or, yeah. um, is, you know, because I do, I love to help people. I don't like to see anybody in pain. I don't, things of that nature. But then there's times when people have gotten, like certain people may have gotten too used to me helping them, whether it's, you know, we do. Too used to you or, being a specific identity. Right. And so then I have to pull back for my own sake because okay. I didn't know how to set boundaries prior. Whoop. Now we're starting to see some things set up for your identity crisis. Exactly. And so when I start to pull back, then it's, well, you know, you, you broke your promise to me or you're not who you said you That's were, right. or, That's right. you know, well, no, but how much can I take? I've got my own right. life too. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, <laughs> they are labeled as coarse and uncaring. Oh, you were supposed like, you don't care about me. You don't love me because like, yes. if you did, you would continue to, to take my abuse or whatever. Yes, exactly. And abuse comes in more than one form. It, oh, you know, yeah. it, it could be, you know, it could masquerade as, you know, doing something good for people. But when these people take advantage because they know how much you love them. Right. And they don't trust me. I was an addict. That's what we do. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. And it's, you know, I don't think that's even intentional. No, no, no. It, no, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely it's, not it's, intentional. It's guttural. It is something that, you know, I, it's funny. I watched my five-year-old or four-year-old nephew when he was younger. I mean, he's not five or four now, but I watched him act just like an adult addict. And I was like, oh, this is, this is because he wanted to play his video games or whatever. 
You know, right. and I was like, oh, well, I mean, I, I know that he's he was brought up in, you know, the age of addiction. Like we are currently like you mm-hmm. know, we're, we're, we're up to our eyebrows in addiction, you know, like mm-hmm. so all of this stuff, like as it as it manifests and things is, is, you know, like my. So he was acting just like an adult in, in a treatment center. That is, how are you going to make me not do this? So it's like, wow. I'm the, you're the victim here, right? Like, and, and it's a very natural sort of thing that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It is within, it is within us to, to manipulate other people um, mm-hmm. to get what we want. Yeah. Yes. You know, and if you tell them no, they're oh, going to be the victim gosh. of you and you're not going to care about them and you're not, and so, and that's what this is saying, right? Meanwhile, they will be labeled as coarse and uncaring in the manifest, in the manifestation, they are seen as dull and disinterested yet in their hearts shines a light for all things. When I go into a treatment center and I tell them, I don't care about your addiction. I don't care mm-hmm. if you go out and drink mm-hmm. like this could be seen as coarse and uncaring. And sometimes like counselors will like jump back, but then. I, I have to remember and I have to remind them that I care about you. Right. If right. you go out and drink, I'm still going to care about you. Right. If you don't go out and drink, I'm still going to care about you. Right. No, There's a I, light within I, me for you, whether you are what you say you want to be or not. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you want to be. You want to be an addict out there? Go out there. Be an addict. I'm not going to go out there with you, but I'm going right. to love you. Right. Right. And everything you say is out of love. I've been like that with my oldest son. um, Because when I look at him, I see everything, you know, like mistakes I made when we came home from DV. And, um, but he's, he's such an awesome man. He really, I should say kid. I'm always going to look at him as my baby, but you know, he's 26 and married with kids, you know, and, um, but he is, his heart is so amazing, but he has the PTSD. He has other things, but he's like, I'm not going to go on medicine, mom. And I'm like, okay, I can't force you. But I'm like, if you just did X, Y, Z, even therapy, you know, and um, sometimes I come down really hard on him, but it's not, it's for no other reason than because it hurts me to know that his life could be better. Right. And, and this is part of your identity as a mother and other things like that. So, I mean, all yeah, of these things yeah. that we talked about really started exposing a lot of your, a lot of the identity that you really um, identify as and that you, you hold very dearly to who you are. Yeah. Um, and as you traverse this data breaches and all of these things that you're going through right now, keep in mind that there are lessons here about who you believe you are. And what you believe your, you know, like your, your work is and, and, and all that. You're doing such beautiful work and, and it's all being exposed very naturally. And if you approach it naturally without judgment, you're going to grow right through it. Oh, I'm you so, are so yeah. awesome. I just love you. And I love <laughs> our talks. <laughs> Me too. You're just amazing. You're an amazing person. Thank you. So, um, yeah, you did drop off there, but I appreciate all your, all your love and I appreciate you joining me. It's beautiful. Um, okay. I'm going to wrap up there, everybody. This is Tao of the day. Um, I hope if you do listen, I mean, I've found like people have messaged me and told me that they listen and I really appreciate you guys listening and I hope it's, uh, it's helpful and something that you can, can come to every morning or afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, I'm here 6 a.m. Um, Central Time here in the United States, uh, Monday through Friday, doing Tao of the Day. If you would like a copy of the Tao Te Ching, you can find it on my website, which you can find links to in my profile. Other than that, uh, I'm Martin John. This is Tao of the Day, and until next time, keep recovering yourself.